If Prince were still alive, I think that this is probably a band that he could potentially get behind, even though he would probably think that this band totally ripped him off. What is up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. I'm Gabriel Fast. I am the wannabe critic. Today, what we are talking about is issues. Not my personal issues, the band issues. They have a new album out. It's called, I never freaking remember what the titles of these albums are called. It's called Beautiful Oblivion. I've heard the name issues thrown around, you know, in the conversation around, you know, the kind of post hardcore scene. For the past few years now, never really listened to them that much. Can't recall any songs at all that I've ever listened to or heard by them. But they've really been getting a lot of hype and a lot of buzz. So whenever I saw this album pop up with most of the albums that I listened to this past week, which is the week of October 7th, this was right along there with it. I decided to give it a listen. And I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised with this album. I actually really, really enjoyed it. This is one of those times where I kind of took a chance on something I had heard about, you know, but wasn't super into. I think I heard something a while back from Issues and I just wasn't crazy about it. So maybe I kind of had like a preconceived notion in my mind that this wasn't going to be good or just going to be crap or whatever. So let's get into talking about it. So I want to preface and say that I actually think the YouTuber K-Mac, who's hilarious, he is profane at times, he tweeted something out that said, the new Issues album is what happens whenever you give the Jonas Brothers an eight-string guitar. And that's a pretty accurate statement. Even from the first song, you get to see some diversity that I wasn't really expecting. The theatrics kind of reminded me of something that you might hear on like a Queen album or like a Prince album. As the album kind of progressed later, especially on the next few songs, it starts to sound super like Maroon 5-ish, like if I had like a Maroon 5-ish type vibe to it. And I really wasn't expecting that. It's like Maroon 5 tried to make a post-hardcore album because that would make them relevant at this point. And it really, really works for issues. I mean, they have two really talented vocalists. One of them's a screamer and one of them is a, you know, just a singer. But the band is super tight and cohesive. It's almost like a post-hardcore punk jazz fusion. Not jazz, I meant funk. But I really, really enjoyed this album. The first half of the album is definitely more interesting and kind of keeps me around for the second half. There wasn't a ton that was super memorable on the last half of this album. You know, not everyone can have a masterpiece, but this is definitely one of the more enjoyable post-hardcore albums I've heard in quite some time. I don't know if post-hardcore is the right word. That's the best thing that I can think of to call it though, is just kind of fits into that genre. I wish I had more backstory to give you about issues, but I just don't know that much about them. But definitely check this album out. Key tracks for me, Drink About It, Find Forever, and Tapping Out. Those three songs, which is you have the intro and then those three songs right after that, those just are kind of like bam, 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 one right after the other. It works really, really well and immediately grabs your attention. Actually on iTunes here, it looks like the first four songs are the ones that they say are the key tracks as well. So there you have it. It keeps your attention. The whole thing is good, I would say but the first half of it is really good. So as far as the score for me, I mean, this is kind of a brief video just cause I don't know a lot about this band and kind of going into it blind, usually I have more to say, but for once I don't. Giving this a score though, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 7.5 out of 10 because it does seem like it's above average. It does stick out, but at the same time, it kind of adheres to a formula that a lot of these bands are putting out. You know, it's either the front half or a back half to an album are the things that stand out the most. And this front half of this album really, really stood out, whereas the rest was just kind of samey and not incredibly diverse. But I did really enjoy it. I encourage you to go listen to it. Come back to this video, leave a comment. I would love to know what you think. Please slap like, subscribe, comment, ring the bell, and check out our podcast. We talk about all kinds of stuff there. So I really, really appreciate you checking out this video, and I hope I did this album justice um, in reviewing it. If I miss something, please let me know. You'll have my attention, and I'll do better for next time because we're always trying to improve. That's what we do here on The Wannabe Critic. So thank you for preparing yourself for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. I am Gabriel Fast. I will always be The Wannabe Critic. <laughs>